Hey everyone, how you doing? Doug Barry here. I appreciate you being with me on this video. We're going to be talking a little bit about what we see happening in the world right now, especially regards, with regards to the question that's on a lot of people's minds. It's in the news a lot. And that is, are we on the verge of World War III? Now, first I want to say this. I'm not a big fan of the hype type videos, the approach to try to get people to watch a video by making things sound all doom and gloom and heavy. We are talking about a couple of the key things in particular. Number one, we've got prophecies out there. We've got the Blessed Mother Church approved prophecies. I'm not talking about the ones where we're hearing this person may have said this recently. And so we're wondering about, I'm talking about stuff such as a key to Japan, 1973, where the Blessed Mother said that fire would fall from the sky and a great multitude of the world would be annihilated. Church approved. I'm talking about Quapa, Nicaragua, 1980 where the Blessed Mother told Bernardo Martinez, who eventually became Father Bernardo Martinez, he has since passed away, and told him that we are hastening the arrival of a third world war because of our lack of response to the call, the urgent call for conversion. These are the types of prophecies that are out there, approved by the church, where we've been told from heaven, through in particular the Blessed Mother, that we are on the verge of a, another global catastrophe such as a World War III. Now, you bring into the equation what we see with the signs of the times. We see things such as what just happened at the time I record this recently, where Iran fired off over 300 missiles at Israel. 99%, according to the reports that I've heard, were shot down. Now, some say, well, see, they just don't have the, the capability of actually doing a good job with their attacks. Therefore, we don't have to worry about this stuff. All this is showing us is that the tension is very, very thick. So thick, as the saying goes, you could cut it with a knife. In addition to that, the cyber attacks that we know have been going on for quite some time. And I've talked about this in other videos. And sometimes people will respond and sometimes people don't with regards to these videos. And a lot of times people are hearing these videos and saying, yeah, here's another one. We're not even going to think about it. I'm not going to pay attention to it. I get that. I understand why that can be the case for some people. The reason I bring this up is because we can't fall asleep on this stuff. We can't sit off to the side. We've got to be thinking about a couple of key questions. Number one, are we really on the verge of World War III? Well, I don't have an answer to that. No one really does, except we see signs of the times that seem to point towards something growing in seriousness. When you've got China that sounds like they're supporting Iran and their attack, Putin, according to some reports today, the time again I record this, is sending a message to Iran saying, hey, rein this in because this conflict could explode very, very quickly and make it a very um, more, much, a much more intense, I should say, war in the Middle East and globally. Are we prepared for this? Are you and I taking the time to look at these events in light of the prophecies and ask the question, what can I do right now? Now, we always offer stuff to be our coalition. And when we do these videos, we're constantly trying to encourage you to get out there and get our free download. The one we've got in this video right now, the link in the description is to get out there and check out, you can see in the bottom there, free bug out bag checklist and what to do with water. And why do I say that? Because look, if a World War III breaks out, if the power grid goes down, if a cyber attack actually affects our power grid, our banking system, our grocery stores, our water treatment plants, and yes, they have found cyber alerts, you should say. You could say security alerts in our water treatment systems and our wastewater systems. These are things that can hamper, can cause great panic in a society, in any community. If the water goes down, if people don't have access to fresh drinking water, if, if the, the wastewater goes down and people can't live their days in a way that creates that kind of order, peace, hygiene, and so forth, we can't get to grocery stores to get food. We can't get medical care. We can't get lights, power, electricity, things of that nature. You will find a society collapse fairly quickly. So again, if you go out to the link that you'll find in the description and get this, bit, this as you see on the bottom of the screen, this free bug out back checklist, in particular, we want to focus on the water storage checklist. Why is this so important? There's an old, there's an old kind of survival statement out there, adage out there. You can go about three minutes without oxygen and you're dead, you know, breathing. You can go about three days without water and you're dead. You can go about three weeks without food. So you've got these three minutes, three days, three weeks, oxygen, water, food. Obviously, water is pretty important. 
most people don't have a lot of stored up water. Now, a lot of people will have food in their pantry, you get food in your pantry. A lot of people have several days of food, but a lot of people don't have any water stored up. I know this. I've asked this for years all over the place. And you will find regularly people say, well, you know, I didn't really take time to store up any water. I, you know, I just go to the faucet. I turn that handle. Water comes out of that faucet. Well, if that doesn't happen and you look at your family, your wife, your husband, kids, and you have nothing to give them water-wise, you're going to be scrambling. And it can get very, very serious, very dangerous, very desperate, very quickly in a matter of days. A friend of mine who is very entrenched in government level type survival, FEMA, DHS type uh, information, told me point blank, Doug, 48 to 72 hours. Okay. If the power grid goes down, water treatment plants go down, things like that really hit hard. Give yourself 48 to 72 hours and you'll start to see a community break down. The things that keep communities from breaking down, that keep families from breaking down is when there are resources coming in. Logically, think about this. If we've got resources coming in, Red Cross is coming, National Guard is coming, they're bringing food, they're bringing water, FEMA is going to show up, they're going to set up their tents, we can line up and get our case of water. That's going to that's gonna help us for a while, a little bit. It really is important that we take an attitude of self-reliance, that we actually do what God intends for all of us to think about and do, and that is prepare. Now, is that in Scripture? Of course it is. It's in various places. In particular, let's go back to the Old Testament, where Joseph of the Old Testament interprets Pharaoh's dream, and Pharaoh's dream says there's going to be seven years of bounty and then seven years of famine. And what does Joseph say they need to do? Well, they prepare for those seven years that they have bounty they have food they have all the resources they save some up they prepare they take a measure of wheat and all the other infrastructure you have to imagine for the for the land of egypt and all the surrounding provinces that benefited from what egypt did because of what joseph told pharaoh to do based on what god told joseph so for people out there and i see this in the comment section even on my videos people will say well we're not going to worry about about preparing for this, preparing for that. We're not going to worry about a bug out bag. We're going to worry about water. We're not going to do that. We're just going to trust God. And I'm not trying to be facetious here, but I would simply say, well, then trust him right now and don't, don't worry about paying your mortgage. Don't worry about going to work. Don't worry about going to work to make money, to buy food. Don't worry about you putting effort into the things that you do on a daily basis to make sure that you have food and water and shelter. You're paying for heat and electricity. You're paying for air conditioning. You're paying for all of that. You're doing that right now already. That's because you're taking the steps common sense wise. And most anybody who's thinking right would say, well, that's what God would want us to do. Well, why wouldn't he want us to do that if we're preparing for something that's more catastrophic, something more dangerous from a natural disaster to even a war? Why would God not want us to use common sense? And when we see the writing on the wall, when we see the signs of the times, we see the things happening, going on all around us. We hear government leaders, we hear nation leaders, we hear countries like Iran launching over 300 missiles at Israel. And multiple countries were involved in shooting those missiles down. This could very easily escalate to a level where cyber warfare, cyber attack, some sort of attack physically, just like what happened in Moscow when 140 some people were killed when just a handful, I believe it was four, terrorists went in, opened fire, and then lit the building on fire. They opened fire, shot people, and then lit the building on fire. And we're being told by federal agencies here in the United States, at least, that that could happen here too, that sort of thing. The border's been open. We've had all these problems in these areas. And so we sit here, and a lot of people will still say, ah, I'm just going to trust God. I trust God too, but I trust that God gave me common sense, and he gave me this gray matter up here between these ears, and I have to use it in the right ways, not in fear and panic, not in anxiety. In fact, the more we prepare, we are far less likely to fall into anxiety. Imagine right now, power goes off, you have no water, if water treatment plants are shut down, there's no water coming out of your pipes anymore, you don't know how long it's gonna be. Maybe you can't even turn on the radio, maybe there's no signal for some reason. Satellites have been compromised and we don't even have internet, whatever it might be, and you find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden you don't have access to these basic necessities. But you have food stored up. Maybe you've stored up enough food for a month or two. Maybe you've got freeze-dried food, dehydrated food, canned food. You've got food ready to go. Maybe you've got water stored up. You've got 
50 gallons, 100 gallons. Maybe you've got water purifiers, things like, you know, I love the Icon. Um, it's actually Lifesaver Icon, lifesavericon.com. Uh, you can go to our website, brcoalition.com, and get information on this on these materials. This is a water purifier. I can go to the local lake or stream or river, and I can draw water from it, run it through a purifier, something as, as simple as this, and I can have water. So this item here helps me not get anxious. And some would say, well, if you trusted God, you wouldn't have that. Well, let's go back to that key point then. Do you trust God to pay your mortgage for you? Do you trust God to go to the grocery store for you? If you've got a celebration coming up, baptism, you've got a wedding coming up, you've got some big event coming up, what do you do? You prepare for it. You make sure you've got food for your guests. You make sure you're taking care of all the amenities that need to be taken care of in order to accommodate those people that are coming to celebrate. None of us would sit back and say, but this is a sacrament. It's a baptism. It's a sacrament. It's a wedding. It's a marriage. We're just going to let God, it's his sacrament. We're going to let him provide everything for us. And someone would say, well, of course he provides for us, Doug. He does it through us by the grace of God, working hard, making some money, going to the store, getting what we need, hiring a caterer, whatever it might be. It's all the common sense things that we have to do. I encourage you to go out, click that link in the description. Go on out to our website. Download that, that you see on the bottom of the screen, the water storage checklist. Get started with the most important basic you can have. Apart from something such as safety, and I say safety because if someone's going to break into your house, someone's going to try to attack you, someone's going to try to kill you, you could be cold, you could be hungry, you could be thirsty, but the first priority is to make sure that the person trying to kill you can't kill you, doesn't succeed in that, or your loved ones. But with all things being equal and we don't have that kind of attack, the first physical thing that we need, other than oxygen to breathe, three minutes, right, is water. Water, food, shelter. We need these things. Click that link in the description, brcoalition.com forward slash water dash storage dash checklist. You see it right there in the bottom of the screen. Get a free, free, free download that gets you started on the right steps to store water, you know, purchasing some extra cases of water, the right containers to put it in, where it should be stored in your home, different ways to store it, buying the individual bottles to the, the larger five gallon, seven gallon to even 55 gallon drums, the type of things you can add to water that are safer. Some say, well, put Clorox in it. I'd rather not put Clorox in my water. So if I'm going to store water long term, there are other things I can use that are safer and more natural. I want to know what these things are. That's what you can get from that download checklist. So go out to brcoalition.com. Click on that link. Go out there. Get that free download. Pay attention to the signs of the times and realize that as much as we would like to just not pay attention to the news because it's depressing or it causes anxiety or stress, it doesn't change what's happening. Us not being aware of it doesn't mean it isn't going on. And us having the attitude of just being optimistic, the glass is half full, speaking of water, the glass is half full, not half empty. That's an attitude that says, I'm just going to believe that Iran will not launch another attack against Israel, that Israel will not retaliate against what Iran did. I'm just going to believe that Russia is going to pull out of Ukraine and that China is not going to attack Taiwan. I just want to believe that we're not going to have another cyber attack in America or anywhere else in the country. By the way, February 21st, I believe, was the day that Change Health, which is a pardon me, which is a subsidiary of United Healthcare. Change Health, a subsidiary of United Healthcare, was hit with a cyber attack on February 21st. What it resulted in is ransomware that was a ransom that was paid out through this ransomware attack of nearly 23 million dollars, I believe, to these hackers that did this. Well, the data that was stolen is still out there floating around. It was reported in the news today that there is more going on. United Healthcare. Change Health, their subsidiary, still has not recovered from this. This has affected billing. This has affected people getting their pharmacies uh, up online again and getting their, their medications that they need, some of them life-saving medications. This is still going on right now from February 21st. Cyber attack against our healthcare system, one of the largest healthcare companies in the world, United Healthcare, still dealing with it. What if that same attack were against our banks? our power grid, against our water treatment plants, our transportation, shipping of food across the country. You could name multiple critical infrastructure pieces that could be hit hard with a cyber attack of some sort that could really create havoc and panic 
in our society. If they do this, these evil people, and they are, that want to do these types of things, and don't think for a minute that there aren't people out there trying and wanting to do these things. If they get away with this sort of stuff, we are not necessarily going to be able to count on FEMA or National Guard or Red Cross to come show up right away and help us. They'll, they'll, they'll try, I'm sure, but can they get to an entire city, entire community? What if it's half the country? What if it's a state? What if it is beyond the scope of what they can handle within reason? That means then it's going to be on you and on me and the steps that we've taken in advance to be prepared to handle whatever may come our way. Now, I've been preaching this message for a long time, and I'll continue to because I do believe in my heart this is what God wants me to encourage people to do. I just believe it. There's a reason why the corporal works of mercy are essential and critical and actually affect our salvation. If you notice the first few corporate works of mercy, it's feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked. In other words, provide the physical necessities that everybody has to have. We're supposed to do that on a daily basis anyway, especially with those that God has entrusted to our care. But in a crisis situation, when access to those things is taken away from the average person out there, things could get pretty crazy pretty fast. So again, I'm going to wrap this up in a moment here, but I want to encourage you again, go out to that link that you see in the description below. Go on out and get that free download. Get started. We have other downloads that are out there that we've been offering for free in past videos. Go pass through the old videos. Go check them out. Get out there. Start with the water. We have things on uh, EDC, on bug out bags, on a variety of other things that are out there that help us start thinking more preparedness mindset, especially in a world that regularly reminds us of how fragile things are. Are we on the verge of a World War III? That is a question that has been asked and is being asked right this moment to military experts, retired and current, you name it. Uh, nation leaders are out there discussing this. Everybody's concerned about it for good reason. But the big question is, what are you and I doing about it? Not necessarily World War III. We should be praying. We should be fasting. We should be going to God on that subject. But what are we doing on our own to make sure that we can care for our little foxhole that we're in, our little situation, our little, let's say, our community, let's say our family, those that God has entrusted to your care, what are you doing to prepare to take care of them if something should happen as soon as tonight, tomorrow? Just like all of a sudden, at a certain moment, Iran launched 300 plus missiles at Israel. Thank God they were able to shoot them all down. Almost all of them were shot down. But what if something happens and it gets through and we find ourselves in a whole different world? Let's take the steps that we can while we have the time to be better prepared. I think it's going to matter. I think you're going to be thankful that you did. All right, don't forget, brcoalition.com, brcoalition.com. Go check it out. Link in the description. Get that free download for that water checklist. Get started with that. And then there's other videos with other checklists. There's other things you can find out there. We're trying to offer these things out there free for you. We also have you know, training that's out there as well, monthly training and so forth. You can look at our website, brcoalition.com for more information on that. Sign up for that if you like. We have a course, the BREP course, Be Ready Emergency Preparedness course, all types of things we have put together out there to help you be better prepared, body, mind, and soul. And yes, spiritually is always first, but the natural piece of who we are matters. And so in the comment section, if you're going to comment on this, I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. If you're going to comment in the comment section about how we don't need to worry about these things, we're just going to trust God, then again, I remind you not to be facetious, but just to make the point, then trust him right now and don't worry about going to work. Don't worry about having the right foods and things around for your loved ones. Don't worry about paying your mortgage and so forth. You would say, that's ridiculous, Doug. God wants us to be faithful to the responsibilities that he gives us. That's my point. So. God bless you. I hope and pray that things don't become worse, but it definitely looks like they might. Let's be better prepared. Remember, hope is found when you have a plan of action in the face of a crisis. I appreciate you being with me. We'll see you again soon.